Aurora is going in that hole. <laughs> so what's happening is the Aurora is coming and is going down this. Okay, it's going around this. And here, it's going back up. And here, it's going in. Now, none of the scientists recognize this. They don't understand how come it can go in the middle here, but it can't there. It's because there's two cones. And there they are. What happens is the aurora at the top, in the north, has a space around it. It can move. But it goes in here. You can't see it. You can't see it. This becomes dark. But when the aurora comes back up, okay, when it comes back up, it creates this form. So this form is not coming down into the earth, it's coming out of the earth. Wow. This is exactly the way the blood comes out. This right here is the micro valve. This allows the blood to go in. And then after it does this little thing in less than one second, it goes out the aura, which is here. It's more uh, in relationship to size. As the, here's the micro valve and here's the aura valve. That's what happens in the heart. So what happens down here is that it gets stopped somehow, it becomes braked. It can't get through this. How come it can't get through that? Because when you make a vortex that goes in here, the vortex won't go down all the way to the red because this part keeps it and it splashes out and the vortex can never get all the way down. It's like that. That's why when the blood goes into the heart, it can never blow out the apex. This, this right here would be under great pressure, okay, but it never blows out like a tire because the vortex can't get it down all the way. And then by time, uh, it's, uh, how much, it's one, it's 0 0.36 seconds, it's less than a third of a second the blood gets to the bottom here, and then get all the way, and then reverses. It reverses just like the aurora. Now, what's interesting is this, and this is, really I want you to think about this. This is what's happening here. In this process, Here's the first cone. This cone is based on suction. That's what's happening here. The aurora is being sucked in here. Now you can't see the aurora because it's coming from the sun and it's, you know, it's, it's called many things. It's called um, Oregon or it's called uh, solar flares or solar wind or the Akasha. Or there's so many names for this. Okay, but when it comes in, you can't see it. You can only see it when it's coming out. So the aurora is coming from the earth, not the sun. The sun is causing the aurora, but it's causing it in the, in the, in the earth. Okay, so this is based on suction. So this is the vortex. And a vortex, as you look in the bathtub, is very, very fast in the very center of the drain, but on the outside of the drain is very slow. Right? So suction is really fast here, really fast, and on the outside it's really slow. All right, here's the other one. This one, okay, comes out of this area here at the tip and goes across here, just like it's doing here, and goes up. Now this time, this is centrifugal force. So that means that this is centrifugal force. Everything is moving. Okay, it's so a facet towards the edge, not the middle. So we have a really fast here and really fast in the center. It's really fast. This is suction and this is centrifugal force. So what it means is, is that this part right here is the slowest of both vortexes. This is the slowest of the vortexes going down the tub, and this is the slowest inside of the uh, centrifugal force like Ben-Hur, and one goes around all those chariots, the one that's next to the pole is hardly moved at all, and the one on the right is really going. This part right here is the most important part because this is a, this is a mesoderm. This is a barrier uh. 
between these two that have a slowness. And that slowness is just going like this. It's not going like this and like that. It's the balance between those two. So the heart is balancing two vortexes that are based on suction and pressure. Also the paradox. How can this can't, you've ever seen in nature where a hurricane comes to another one and another one goes around it? That doesn't happen. They eliminate each other. But in the earth, that's different. And in our heart, that's different. The blood comes in here extremely fast. Okay? And then it moves out very fast on the outside. Not that interesting. And the balance between those two is that messenger. This right here is really a neat thing. Uh, this, is, this is a way I figured out how that the myofiber layers in our heart are organized. We have myofiber roots that go about that thick in our heart. So I'm going to show some more of the aurora. You can see how the aurora at the bottom goes across? <laughs> Doesn't go on the outside. Okay, there it is again. And there it is again. It's showing it. And what's interesting, it starts at one point, it becomes a little bit bigger, becomes two. This one here and then two. Does that show up? There are there are points where this where the form, I don't know where I put it, but when you spin this, okay. The aurora always has these streaks. I don't know if you ever noticed it. There are streaks coming out. They're coming out of these points. It's a, it's a circle, but they're coming out here. And that's why there are three. There are usually three points where the aurora comes. One, two, three. And that's exactly where the form fits in the earth. Now, let me go a little further and show you Look at that. Now that's out there uh, with the Hubble. Okay, and there's some kind of sphere out there. It's got something going on. Okay. Not all fantasy here. Okay, here I'm showing how this form, when you spin it, okay, when you spin this form, that form is this one. That's the size. There it is. It's spinning. And it's bringing in that vortex. This vortex is exactly the same size as the chest of Hadron. This is an energy form. These others aren't. This is an energy form. That's another new consciousness that we have to work with. This is based on energy. So here comes the vortex. And the vortex goes right straight down this guy. See this guy right here? That's him. And that's this guy in the middle. And what happens is this vortex doesn't get down here. It can't get down here because then it starts splashing out like that. Same in the heart. That's, That's why the, the apex doesn't blow, blow, uh, blow out. Okay, so I'm trying to get to this one thing here. That's really neat. And this one is, there's the two cones. Ah, oh, now here. You can see the aura moving. See it moving? It's going like this. It's going back and forth. It's not just going one direction. This is part of the middle area, I told you, the mesoderm, where they're both slow. That's not very fast at all. That's because that's the midpoint. That's this part right here, where I'm telling you, it's both slow and two different kinds of vortexes. OK. Thank you, sciences. <laughs> Sometimes they really help. Uh, and then, uh, if you put this into minimum surfaces, this is the shape of the seven-sided form. And this is the left ventricle, okay, of the human heart. And the left ventricle has this part here that's steeper than this part. And the, of all the researches that I've done, doctors don't know why this is a different point here than this. Is why isn't it just straight down like that? The reason it's not down like that, because that's not what the gestahedron does. The gestahedron has that bend right there. So if I put this in a vortex, I've found that this is what's going on. Our heart is a break. Because this part right here is deaccelerating. And so is this. The heart form is deaccelerating. Not speeding up, it's slowing down. And this part is slowing down four times faster than this. 
That's why this doesn't blow out. So the heart is breaking the blood. It's trying to slow it down. And then what does it do? It gets all the way to the apex. And then it, what does it does? It reverses. It does exactly what the earth does with the aurora. The, the blood comes in here. It gets down to the apex. And then it reverses direction. This one goes this way. When it gets down here, the heart does its thing. And it goes out this way, just like this. That's how the blood leaves and comes into the heart and leaves the heart. That is the left ventricle. How do I do that? I blew a bubble in the sphere, uh, in, the, in this. You take a bubble, you dip this in soap, and you take a straw and you blow a bubble. That's the shape this is here. It's this organic. is the bubble that's formed inside. It's organic. That's how you become, this is how a geometric form becomes organic. You think, well, he made that up. No, all I have to do is photograph the, the bubble and then measure. Okay, there it is, which I just showed you. And there it is compared to the real heart. Uh, it's on the right, it's on the left side, the left ventricle. And this right side has been taken off to show you that the shape, okay, the form, formative forces are coming from geometry that we can understand that has gone out into minimum surfaces. And what minimum surfaces means is that everything inside geometry is trying to become a sphere. Same thing here. Same with this. And there's a really good guy, has Dr. Walter Russell, that really backs this up. And this is his work. I recommend his work. He talks about how the sphere okay, is an incandescent cube. And I agree. Okay, here's the heart, and in the heart there are eight layers, and they go in different directions. They go like this, then they get even, like and then they go back up. Just like this. Here it is. This is actually a muscle that's explaining how this works. So here it is going like this. It gets to the middle, and it goes out here. All right, so the muscles are showing something. I've never found anyone that has been able to explain this on how this works. I've looked at all the researchers. I've, I've, I've given two uh, conferences to doctors, and they're really surprised that I found this. Uh, and so am I. <laughs> so here it is. Uh, as you notice, there's a, a vortex that's going in. See that? Underneath is going out. <coughs> oh wow! So what is that he's got? You know, <laughs> what is that? <coughs> this is what I did. I wanted to find a cone that would fit 26 degrees. And so I put lines on here because in projective geometry, that's what we do. We take flat patterns and we put lines on. So I thought, okay, I'm going to take this as a red line there. I'm going to take this around and see what happens when I get a cone. And I got one cone, like this, and I want to see what happens to those straight lines. And those straight lines become curves. But it won't fit in here. It won't go in this thing. Where is it? Uh, it won't go in here. Okay, so I'm going to do it twice. So I go around here twice, I make two cones. Okay, and I bring it around here so it meets the other edges. And all of the straight lines, i got to get this right here. Get the red lines lined up. Then all of the straight lines become triangles. Wow. Now nobody knows this. I didn't know this until I started fooling around with this. Well, just think, two cones make all triangles. Oh, but it won't fit in here. Getting better, though. I know i got to go another time, so I turn it around one more time. And so I get it all lined up here. I get all squares. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> really? Mm. Well, that's amazing stuff. <laughs> but still won't go in, I don't think. Oh, it's getting close, though. 
So I found out that I had to do it one more turn, and it goes into chaos. There you go. But it fits. <laughs> <laughs> so I realized I had to do it four times. Now that was kind of neat, except that they have eight, not four. So then I went back to my old research here. My old research was with the two circles, you know? There was the two circles with the same black center. And if I take that center out to the periphery, so that both centers now, one is on the periphery of both circles. And inside that is root three, which makes a cube. Mm -hmm. You saw me do that. That's also known as the vesica. That's where they put formative people in, into that. And why? Because that's the balance between two polarities. The balance between two polarities now, which is a paradox. Mm -hmm. All right. So, what I do? I put two of these together. And what I did is I just followed what they had here. I saw that, uh, I saw that the muscle myofibers were going, being tucked in that direction underneath that little white slit, that it was going under that slit there, and it was going under, so I just did the same. So you see how mine are going in the slit? See how I did this, how I figured this out? See how it goes in the slit there? Just like up there. So, uh, trouble is I don't see any paper clips on this thing, so it's gonna be easy. But I'll try. Okay, now turn this into a cone. That's exactly 26 degrees. So that should be this cone that I have here. So. That cone goes in there. Not, maybe I can show you with the bigger one because you can think, well, maybe, maybe not. But it's the same size cone. So if I twist this around like this until it comes to the second circle, and I take them together. So this is one circle, right? This is one circle. That's this one. Now this one is hanging down here. So if I take this one and I, I wrap it around, and uh, I get another cone. Well, that doesn't work. Oh, they two don't. That's not working. Look. There are two cones, that's cool, but I thought, well, I can cut that off. You know, I can. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, I'm uh, this is a human thing. <laughs> so I don't know what to do. So what I decided I would do is to say, well, why don't I just keep going? So I did. I just, I just kept them going in the same row. And now I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight layers mm. and the right side cone. Mm. So what I needed to do was to find out if my protocol was correct. So I see that there's a line coming down here like this. See it? Okay, and then if I peel one layer off, that's what he did. He peeled the layers off and cut them off. Okay, and there's it's still going down. Get to the third layer. Well, not quite as much. I get to the middle layer, just straight across. So now, I have to do a paradox. I have to do a reversal. Instead of going down, I have to go up. Instead of going down, I have to go up. All right, so here we go. I'm going to start here. I'm going to take off another layer. It's a middle layer. OK, so I take this and do this. Aha, uh -huh. it's starting to go up. Now it is going up, mm -hmm. and now it's exactly the eight layer. Yeah. 